Hey guys, guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be covering our Firebats build for pushing greater rifts. We've been tweaking it over the past few days with some success and some failures. Um, however, now we seem to have the, the build that's kind of going to sit right and probably see we're through into the high 80s uh, before I have to make any more tweaks to it. So I'm going to share that with you today. Um, for you guys that are maybe lower down, there's some alterations you can make to help you start pushing. So let's get into it guys, let's go through the skills first. So skills, Horn, Draining Spirit, um, 12 mana per second per turn, which is really good because you don't want to find that out of mana on a Rift boss or halfway through the dungeon and just kind of run around like an idiot waiting for some regen. Um, if you're not struggling with mana, you could always run Poison Spirit, um, just so that enemies take 20% more damage from your attacks, it's a nice DPS increase, so maybe on the lower Rift levels you could run this um, as you sort of put and you probably want to sort of like Draining Spirit. Firebats, Cloud of Bats, that's a gimme, we're not going to cover that one, everyone knows it's stupidly OP. Locust Swarm with the Cloud of Insects ruin on, for enemies deal 25% reduced damage to yourself, so you want to make sure that you're spreading this before you start channeling, just to make sure you've got that little bit of damage reduction going on. Soul Harvest with Languish, so you get the 10% armor per stack, um, and it reduces the movement speed. Pair that up with the weapon choice we've got and it makes for a really really good toughness to sort of help you survive in the higher rifts. Spirit Walk John, this is a personal preference, you always want to have some sort of Spirit Walk on. Um, John I prefer, well, I prefer because it gives you 3 seconds where if you're stuck in tight corridors inside a dungeon it can help you give it a little bit longer to get out of the way of all the sort of stuff that's going on. Um, However, if you do just like to run with a two second, you could run with Honored Guest and maybe use that for your mana regen and go to Poison Spirit on your horn, or maybe just run with this and Draining Spirit as well. And some people prefer Severance for the movement speed, so that's kind of a personal preference, but you do want to have some sort of Spirit Walk in there. Jaunt is my favourite because if you get in and you get your Locust Swarms on and you get a few horns going, you start channeling. Um, as the damage is building up and ramping up, you can spirit walk while you're channeling, and then you get three seconds of immunity, and you can be channeling at max damage. And uh, it's just like a sort of DPS increase is used as as well. Uh, Hex Jinx, you want to just cast this on cooldown. I did struggle with this when I first started this build. I kept dying, and I was thinking this is really bad. I'm gonna go back to Jade Harvester. And everyone will say no, no, it is the best build. You need to play around with it and try more, and keep going with it and keep going with it. Um, and the best way I've found to remember is just whenever this guy's off cooldown, cast it. Just keep an eye on this ticking. Um, and when it ticks off, cast it again, and then you always know you've got that damage reduction. Passive skills you always want to run Spirit Vessel if you're on a solo build, in my opinion, because you, sometimes you just take a crazy spike damage. You can't avoid it and you just die. This will help you with that. Grave Injustice gain 1% of your maximum life and mana and reduce the cooldown of all your skills by one second when the enemy dies within 20 yards or because we're going to be up close and personal with firebats um, your cooldowns are set really quickly with this especially if you're killing a lot of enemies so it's always good it means that you can keep spirit wall cooling down quite quickly which means you can take less damage because you can be in spirit wall longer and it just rolls like that and keep going like that. Confidence ritual you deal 25% additional damage to enemies within 20 yards Obviously paired up with how close we're going to be, it's a damage increase. Creeping Death, uh, Haunt, Locust Swarm and Piranha amplica Amplification last almost forever. Um, there is an alternative to this, depending on your playstyle and how you like to play it. Uh, I did mess around with dropping Creeping Death and going with Piazza Veil for 20% increased damage and mana cost increased by 30%. If you do run this, you definitely want to take jaunt um, off your spirit walk and go for the mana and you do want to be running um, we're going to haunt with draining spirit on alternately I did try with some success but lower down running with gruesome feast so every time you pick up a health globe or the purple globes that the enemies drop you get 10% of your maximum mana and intelligence it can be pretty sick how much damage you can kick out with it but as you get higher and you start to clear a tiny little bit slower um, I did prefer to just go back to Creeping Death and kind of keep that rolling. 
So that's the skills, guys. Next, we'll move on to our armor. We'll go on the armor tab. We'll go through. Obviously, Abacares is the set that we're going to be using. Um, but what we'll do is, as we go through each piece, we'll also cover what kind of staff power you want to be looking at as an ideal. Um, and we'll also be covering the jewelry and the legendary gems and all that as well. So, obviously, full set of Arakea. Um, head slot, you want to be looking for your staff priority to be intellect, crit hit chance, fire bats, and a socket. So, we're not too far away. In hindsight, we should have really rolled for crit hit chance, but at the time, because we didn't have a good roll on our Bakuri's belt, I was just trying to increase the damage as much as possible. So, that will need to be replaced at some point. <clears throat> Shoulders, you want to be running intellect, bit life and area damage on our jewelry we have the traveler's pledge in our next slot so that pairs up with the compass rose which gives us our damage reduction while moving by 50 percent and our damage increase by 100 percent while we're standing still so obviously as you can see i'm at 100 stack here and then while we're channeling if we just run it down a little bit <coughs> as if we are running around the, the dungeon um you stop the channel your fire bats your damage starts to increase and then paired up with tag group as well it's a nice dps increase so you always want to have compass rules and traveler's pledge on together and on that we need to replace this with a better version at some point because we had to roll a socket onto ours in the ideal world you already have a socket or you'd have better rule stats and you just put the socket on and um, you'd want fire damage percent increase you want crit hit damage crit hit chance and then your socket as you can see, ours is a bit far away from that, so that's the next thing we want to try and replace. On our torso, we have intellect, vit, life, and socket as our priorities. Wrists, this is a personal preference, depending on what stat weights you've got on your items. Um, personally for me, my ancient Lacumbas was a better stat weight than my Colossal First Spider. So I've run Coils of First Spider in my cube, and then I've run these in my slot slot. If yours is better the other way around, feel free to swap that round. But you do want to use them two between the cube and your the slot. In our hands, we want to be running for Intellect, Area Damage, Crit Hit Damage, and Crit Chance. On our waist, we've always come, uh, sorry, we just covered our Bakuri Belt. Always want to have that at 200% or as very close to it as you possibly can. So if you get one that's a lower roll, try re-rolling it through the cube. Um, or try getting another one with your blood charge. Any way you can, just get that close to 200%. Obviously ours is spot on, which is brilliant. And then the priority is intellect, vit and armor. Our legs, you want to be running intellect, vit, armor and your socks. So that's pretty much perfect for us. On our feet, you want to be looking to get your sorry intellect, vit, armor, and your fire bat skills. So again, that's pretty much a perfect rule for us. It's quite good. And um, in your ring slots, I'm running Unity, which is paired with my traveler, travelers, my Templars, uh, Unity ring for the damage reduction. I find this works a lot better. Some people prefer to run Ring of Emptiness. Um, and unity in the cube, again that just depends on your stat weights I had a really bad ring of emptiness so that's in my cube and I've ran with the ancient unity because it's a better stat increase for me also while we're on with follow up I'm running oculus ring for the damage increase so you want to pay on a lookout when you're going around with your follow up for a little sort of gold bubble appearing on the floor and then you want to be trying to make your way into that bubble for the dps increase Obviously, if it spawns all the way over here and you're killing enemies over here, you don't really want to run away. You just stay where you are, but keep an eye out because it does pop up quite close to you every now and then, and it's a nice DPS increase. While you're running Unity, you do need to make sure that your Templar or your other follower does have the follower cannot die relic, otherwise, it's no point running it. And lastly, our weapons. As you can see, we're running Sacred Harvester, and the stats on that you want are Intellect. Area damage, damage percent, and socket. So you always want to make sure that you're putting your socket in using one of your gifts, and then you need to make sure that the rules on the items are as close to the int 
area damage and damage percent. Obviously, we rolled damage percent, we rolled intellect, and then we put the area damage on. And as you can see, the intellect rolled pretty close to being near max. The damage is in the middle, and um, the lightning damage isn't brilliant, but beggars can be choosers when you need a good weapon. That's the best one I've had rolled for a long time, so I've stuck with that one. And then our hand, we've got Vile Hive. Obviously, I've got an ancient version, which is a good stat bonus. It is a little bit on the way off if you look at the maximum it can be. So, it could have rolled up to 600 damage. So, we're at the kind of lower end there. Intellect is on the lower end as well. Crit hit chance is a baseline rule. Area damage will rule just over halfway with a reforge. So, we could deal with maybe upgrading this at some point as well. But, like I say, it is good. It's, it's the best in slot for this build. Uh, you just want to try and get the, the perfect roll as near as you can. So we'll probably be looking to upgrade in the Vile Hive and our Traveller's Pledge next. <coughs> Excuse me. In our jewelry slots, we are running Pain Enhancer, Pain and Stricken, and Tegruk. Tegruk is normally used in group play. I believe that's a matter at the moment. I'm not doing much group play, so you might be able to correct us on that. But Tegruk is normally the meta gem. But I've found that at the minute, channeling along with our Compass Rose combo, the Endless Walk buff that we get, it really is sick of DPS increase. So I've been having some success with that. So we only at rank 50 at the minute, so we've got some more leveling up to do on that to bring it in line with our other gems, which are like 62, 64 kind of area. Um, Pain Enhancer. It's just, you can't run this build without Pain Enhancer on, I don't believe. And being the stricken for the damage against the elite bosses, it's pretty much just a gimme. Um, lower end, if you're just starting up with your iterates and pushing with this build, you can run, I was running at one point, the alteration gem for the DPS, um, the DPS rather, the decrease on the incoming damage to yourself. Uh, so that is an alternative. Being in the trap is another alternative. If you don't have one of these level up as high. Um, and being the powerful, you can get away with in lower level rifts if you're pushing. Um, but really, you want to be sticking. These three, I would say, as a priority or a recommended would be trapped or alteration. So, guys, in our cube, come over here and see our cube. We are running the staff of Shio Petra. I think that's about right. I think that's, I think that's what said it right. Um, fire bats attacks in 100% faster and cost 75% less mana. Cause the first fire which we covered, you can probably want to run the Kumbas in your cube if possible, um, and cause the first fire on you. But because I had such a bad roll and we've got the ancient Kumbas with a decent roll, we put the coils in our cube. Alternatively, if you're grouping, you can use Mantle of Channeling. Um, or if you don't have the coils yet or the Kumbas, you could run the Mantle of Channeling just because you get 25% increased damage and take 25% reduced damage but the life on hit is so good so you do want to get that at some point and lastly Ring of Emptiness so because we had a bad Ring of Emptiness we put in the cube around with an Ancient Unity Ideal World would put Unity in the cube and would have an ancient ring of emptiness or a really good roll ring of emptiness to make it worthwhile. While you're running this build, guys, any paragon points? Um, just put mine up here. Yeah. I've got something to spend. I keep forgetting to spend them. Utility wise, you want to go area damage first, then you want to go to your life on hit, resource reduction cost, and then go find last. Defense, you want to max out life, you want to max out armor and then resist all, and then lastly, your regeneration. Offensive, uh, you want to be going for, really, I need to reforge this slightly, because what we'll do is we'll reset this, and we'll do it so you can see. You want to be going attack speed first, because attack speed is your channeling. Crit hit chance, because you want to be trying to crit as much as you can. Then you want your crit hit damage, at the bottom. And then lastly, you want to be going into cooldown reduction. I've never noticed that I didn't change that from Jade Harvester, so that'll be a little bit of DPS increase for us. Uh, on your core, if you are struggling, you can go Vitality, um, but I haven't struggled at the minute, so I've just got to pile it all into Intellect. 
Uh, you want to bring your movement speed up to 25%, and then you want to also get some mana. Um, you can skip out on the mana and pilot into vitality or more into intellect, but I did struggle at some point with my mana, so that's why I've put that in there as a kind of sort of fail safe. We can play around with that and see how it suits you. So, what we're going to do, guys, we're going to jump into a rift, but on a greater rift, and we'll leave it at 60. Obviously, you can see we've just completed a 70. And we're going to push on to a 71, but just for the purpose of this video, make it a bit quicker so the video is not too long. We'll just run through a 60, uh, so you can see how it plays. And then maybe some of you guys that are maybe pushing down Torment 10, 11, you can see what it'll look like when you get up here. Like I say, it is a slower build uh, versus some of the speed builds, but you want to be running maximum DPS increase when you start pushing through your rifts. So you want to make sure that your horn goes. You want to make sure that you've got your toad out, look a swarm, and then you just burn them. They just die so quick. It's not even not even a challenge, guys. It really isn't. But like I say, if you are coming to this build from another build, you will maybe die a lot. Um, I struggled with it at first. I couldn't quite get the combination right. Um, I mean, don't get it wrong, you still die. Hopefully we won't while we're recording this. But... There is times where you just take that spike damage, which is why we took Spirit Vessel. And there is times where you kind of just get trapped and there's nothing you can do. And there's not enough enemies to clear um, to get that cooldown reduction. So I say guys, you want to get them all dotted up, load the swarm on, into Spirit War, and just burn them down. Like, they just go, it's like a hot knife through butter. I know it is set at a lower difficulty, slightly lower than what I've been playing. But even at that slightly lower difficulty, um, or even as it gets slightly higher rather, it's still the same. You still burn through them. There's still no real challenge. The only challenge comes avoiding like spike damage and avoiding like the big hitting enemies. Um, you pretty much just melt enemies all day long, no matter what level you're at. Um, there'll just be a slight, maybe another second delay on killing them. But if you see how fast they die, yeah, you mean nothing to worry about at all. The main thing with this is trying to get through quick enough and finding those of these packs. So I've got some here. And we we'll just die. Not even a challenge. So we've got our little bubble up. Move to it. Keep our hex going. So we get that damage reduction all the time. Protect them. And just keep an eye on your, your soul harvest as well. I'm trying to keep it close to 10 stacks as possible. So we'll get that spirit walk. And we'll start burning them down. Just move all that slightly into here. Oh, be naughty. There we go. It's two down. We'll leave them there and we'll move on and try and find the next pack. Or the next floor. Time has never really been an issue. Um, you normally seem to find daily packs quite quickly. Um, if you are struggling to find daily packs, there will come a point in the rift that I find where there's none, and then all of a sudden there's tons, so don't worry about it, just keep going. You will beat the timer quite comfortably, especially when you start getting pylons as well. It's not really an issue. The main thing is just trying not to, to die and give you an unnecessary death timer. And keep the hex down for the damage reduction. Get the local swarms going. Spirit walk, and then we'll just channel. And we'll just blow through them like they're not even there. Okay, so I took some spike damage there. Maybe my call for not concentrating. But the spirit vessel did save one. Um, so now we just need to be a little bit more careful as we go through because we don't have. Spirit Vessel to save us, so we need to maybe play a little bit more defensively. Um, which I kind of don't do enough of. I kind of just always run in head first. And it does probably maybe result in more deaths than I should have, but that's just the way I play. I'm sure you guys are probably the same, or some of you guys will be the opposite and play a bit more defensive, but I prefer just to run in like a mad hatter and kill things. And it kind of pairs up well with this build because this build is just all about crazy, crazy DPS. <coughs> so 
so we need to start killing things, otherwise we're going to start dying because we haven't got any cooldowns. Or we'll get pulled in like that. That's something that is pretty much unavoidable. Um, even before Spirit Walk came back with cooldown, I don't think we would have had chances to survive that because it was so quick. Maybe that's me being bad. You can let us know in the comments below if that, that was avoidable. I don't think it was. I think that's just one of the times where you take that spike damage and you just gotta man up and get on with it. Start trolling. Start channeling. Right. I think they're not even there. You get this DPS increase from the bubble. Like I say, guys, keep an eye out for that bubble because it is a crazy boost in damage. It doesn't last too long either, so it just tends to like bounce around all over the place. Stack all these up, get my hex down, and on through. Depending on what your toughness and stuff's like and how bad the enemies are in that rift, you can sometimes get away with just running through. But personally, oh, that's nice. Into the, into the buff. Um, I do like to PR some big packs just to kind of help with the timer. Might not be best practice, but that's me what I like to do. Let me make sure I get out of the way of that. Clear off these last few. It really is as easy as that, guys. You just keep rolling, making sure you've got your dots going. Out the fire. Make sure you've got your dots going, make sure you've always got hex up when it's off cooldown so you've got the damage reduction. This is going to be a dead end, isn't it? Maybe not. Make sure you keep up with your soul harvest, which is something I probably forget about more than I should. Um, maybe because I'm running a lot more speed farming and I'm not used to using it all the time. Um, but you do want to make sure that you've got your soul harvest up. Look at that. I think they're not even there. Now, as I said at the start of the video as well, um, when we got in the rift, even at the higher levels, you still melt through them just as quick. Um, it's just a really, really sick build to try, guys. You really should give it a go. Um, I wasn't a lover of it at the start. I did prefer Jade Harvest, but now that I've played it and now I've got all the, quick, uh, the equipment for it, it's just ridiculous. It's I can see why so many people are running it and why people wave about it. All the buffs going, stop them up. I didn't really want to commit with our spirit walk on the cooldown just in case I needed it. But once you start burning through them, it will be set on the cooldown quite quickly. Easy peasy. An absolute joy to play. I mean, especially if you run an alteration of a speed farm build with um, the Angry Chicken and the Mana Jumbo, Mana Jumbo, yeah, Mana Jumbo set. Um, it's actually quite sick because you can just run in and blow everyone up, and then just run off and blow some more people up. It's it's crazy. So if you haven't tried this already, guys, you do want to um, you do want to try the, the rift pushing build, and you should also definitely try the speed farming build. It's um. Very, very fun, shall we say. And we'll kill this guy down. Look at that. Nice shiny new equipment, too. And we'll also be able to upgrade our tech look. For that little bit more DPS. So, guys, that's the build. That's how it plays. Um, try it out, test it out, see what you think, let us know in the comments below if it worked for you, if you use an alternative to this or some sort of variation of this. Um, definitely the strongest build on the live servers at the minute. We'll see what the future patches bring. Um, but it is the, definitely the strongest pushing build. And what we'll do is we'll do a follow up video later on 
um, maybe in a week or so's time to see how we're getting on pushing with this build if we we'll had to make a variation to it um, just so you guys that are watching can maybe get a heads up if you are slightly behind where I'm at or maybe you get to a similar point that I'm going to get to and start struggling again because there's always that sort of cap that you reach and you just need to push past it with maybe a slight different skill set or a slight different item stats or armor kind of thing uh, so we'll, we'll do a follow up video for that but thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed watching please like and subscribe and uh, drop us a follow on the links below and um, I'll catch you guys later